He has saved not only your soul. He has saved the pathway of your life before you were born. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So when we say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me, it's more than just saving my soul. It's the whole of my life, the pathway of my life. He had not only predestined it, he has policed it. He has channeled it to make sure that I have a smooth passage. Take Jesus. Jesus was predestined to come to the world and be killed. And become the greatest. For all time. The greatest. The greatest person born by a woman before and after. Forever. There is, no, there is nobody else in this world before and after that will ever be as popular as Christ Jesus and controversial. But like the Jews made the mistake in their expectations, despite the fact that they have all the prophetic writings, they still made that mistake to think that can anything good come out of uh, Israel? Well, they didn't think that actually it was Nathaniel who said that. But they, they actually do think that anyone who will be Messiah should not come from Nazareth and most certainly should not be poor. Most certainly such a person should come from the Pharisaic family, well-bred, probably the son of the high priest. But God has no interest in the son of the high priest because God wants to repair the damage high priests have been committing. So this Jesus was predestined to come like a poor man in a manger. That's the pathway to greatness. He who was born in the poorest manger had once and for all become the greatest personality that will ever grace this world. And next to him in human history, according to Jesus himself, is who? John the Baptist. Because Jesus said about John the Baptist, out of everyone born of woman, no one is as great as John the Baptist. The pathway to greatness is always the humble beginning. So those of you who are of humble origin, take heart. It's part of his saving you. You will get to where you will get to. The thing is for you to recognize where he is taking you and how far he's taking you. The mistake is you have the tendency to compare your life with somebody's life. It is tragic. You lose peace. You lose the grace of mind the moment you start to compare your life with somebody's life. In most cases, when you compare your life with somebody else's life, unknown to you, it gradually turns you from a human being to an animal. You ask me how. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Before you start to compare your life with somebody else, you have a free mind. Your mind is clean. You can, you can laugh, you can joke, but the moment you start to compare your life with somebody else's life, you will start to be jealous of that person. If that person is lower than you, you'll still be happy towards him. 
If he's achieving what you cannot achieve, jealousy will come in gradually. And jealousy leads on to hatred. And hatred is a terrible sin. Hatred pulls you down. Avoid it like cancer. If you are, if you are given a choice to choose between hatred and cancer, choose cancer. It may sound strange. Choose cancer. Cancer will only destroy this flesh. It will touch your soul. But hatred will destroy your soul. It's a terrible thing. People don't know what they are saying when in anger. I hate you. You don't know what you are saying. You should be, you should, you should be afraid. Some of you will say, eh, but you see, I was telling the truth now. You're telling the truth. It's not the, 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 the problem. Telling the truth that you hate him means nothing. Your problem is you're hating him. That's what is destroying you. It's eating your soul away. In everything, there's always a progression. Always recognize danger from the beginning. And the beginning is comparing your life with somebody else. You are a whole human being, but there are many parts to your body. The day your teeth become so jealous of your tongue, because the teeth want to be moving about like your tongue is. And the teeth are hooked down. And the teeth are coated. They do not taste things. The tongue tastes all the sweet things. And the teeth are jealous of the, of the tongue. When the teeth become so enraged, they will bite the tongue and bite it out. And when that happens, the whole body will die. Don't you see? Watch it. If you know this is, if you know that Jesus has saved you, and he carefully monitored even your shape and your size when you are coming to the world, you know, I believe that there is quality control in heaven. I believe that before any baby comes into the world, there will have been a computer printout of his entire life from conception. I'm telling you, from the day he's conceived in his mother's womb, to the day who will die. Video progression. Not the three years. No. Every day by the minute. So if one has a way to look at the, the video map of any baby coming into the world, you will see the first day, what it will look like. The second day, what it will look like. One month, what it will look like. One year, what it will look like. 18 years, what it will look like. 50 years, what she will look like. 60 years, 70. You see, all the photographs are there. And on earth, when that baby is growing up, if we have the chance to compare what it looks, looks like with what has been predicted on the computer printer, they should be the same. They should be the same. But human beings interfere. It was women alone who used to interfere with, with, with what the computer printout said they should look like. But men also. I see most men now on the street and I feel angry. They have earrings on, they place here. They, it's absolutely ridiculous. That's not what the computer printout in heaven says they should look like. 
is totally unnecessary. And of course, apart from, fa from fashion, greed, greed also changes what we look like from what the computer um, projection of what we should look like. Because you are the chairman of the kitchen in your house, nobody will control you. You will cook 30 pieces of meat. By the time you finish cooking, only 20 are left there. 10 have disappeared to where God and you alone knows. Your husband will never find out how many pieces you cooked or how many are left. But dear, this is your food. Poor man, he will eat what you give him. But what the poor man would soon discover is a hang on, I'm still thin, and my miss is going eh? big, big, big. And if he challenges you, ah, madam, why you uh, it's my family, John. <laughs> you will not know that uh, it's the privilege of the kitchen chief. <laughs> but the progression in heaven says, this is how she should, she should look like. And now, this is what she's looking like. And she doesn't like it. So she will start going to the gym and jumping. The time she should be what? This something else. You, you, you see how we can change our lives? And not only physically, mentally. God has given some people great mental ability. But because they are careless and they, and they join bad company, they never achieve. They become under underlings. That's why Shakespeare also said, the fault is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. But what I'm trying to say to you, Jesus has saved you from the beginning. He has taken care, not only to predestine your soul to go through life unscathed, so that you can, you, you can enter heaven. He has also championed the pathway that will go. If only you will say to him, as for me, I will seek God, and to God will I commit my cause, my plan, the way I go. Which God? The God who does all, this, all the things I have mentioned. More, and he does more. Verse 12, the God who frustrates the devices of the crafty. In this world, you are going to meet many crafty people who will want to trip you. Whether you are, you are working, or even in your home. Crafty people. Your husband may be the crafty one, or your missus may be the crafty one. You, you've got to go through, once you sign the paper, till death do us part for forever and forever, for better and for worse. And that is why um, it is understandable when a, a man suddenly dies, and the, the wife had that, that um, her husband fell down dead. Her brain would quickly, quickly play the, the, the script. See, women are very smart in the brain. She would quickly play it and quickly understand the implication that at last I'm free. <laughs> and then knowing fully well that, that people would be suspicious, then she'll start crying. Hey, my husband, I don't die. Bury me with him. Whereas in her mind, she, she has already started looking at alternative life. Thank God, till death do us part, that bad man who was always harassing me is gone. Uh -huh. The house I will take. The cars I will take. The business is mine. Uh -huh. Now I'm free. But she'll be crying. Do we are black? Mm. Craftiness. Still talking about husband and wife. Do you know that some husbands and wives, in fact, when they are so frustrated, craftily they go to people who can destroy their wife or their husband so that they can be free. So if you are trapped in such a holy marriage, 
It is only God that can what? Frustrate the devices of the crafty. Some people married you because they love you. But some did not marry you because they, they loved you. Some married you because they just see you as an arrogant young fool. More money than common sense. All right, I'll marry him and destroy him. Then I quit. It happens. Some may not marry him because they want to destroy him. But, well, he has money. He can take care of me. He can take care of my brothers, send them to school, and he can... Uh, you know, my mom, why not? I don't love him, I don't, but, I, but I, will, I will manage. And then when he says, oh, my dear, I love you. Oh, you are the best thing that happened to me after Apple. Hmm? And the light-headed man would, would fall for it. Oh, that, that beautiful girl, she loves me. It doesn't occur to him that as you see her to be beautiful, many men also see her to be beautiful. And as she sees you to be ugly, she looks at the other men that she prefers, but they do not have the, the cash in their pocket, and you will do, temporarily. Craftiness. All your business partners, you, you set up business with uh, somebody, you have the money, he says he has the, the expertise, and you, and, you, and you start, and you think it is all right. Now, with, with his craftiness and expertise, he wants your money. Before you know it, when the business grows, you are out. He takes it. And he will get all the members of the board of directors to vote you out. Hmm? Commit your way to Jesus who has saved you before you were born. He will restore you to that original pathway. He will frustrate the devices of the crafty so that their hands may achieve no success in the plans they have against you. I've trusted, I've tested, I've tried it. If God had not done that for me, I would not be here. Because when it comes to enemies, I have them in plenty. When it comes to friends, I don't have any. The nature of my work does not allow me to have friends. It's not compatible with friendship. Truth has no friend. Truth has plenty of enemies. If you think I'm talking rubbish, show me in the Bible who is a friend that Jesus had? None. Even when he calls his disciples, you are my, my friends, he just um, honored them. By the time they were arresting him, many of them, they ran away. Including Peter, they ran away. He had no friend. What about Peter and Co? Tell me, show me a passage in the Bible and I will sit down. We have the Bible says, uh, the best friend of Peter is so, 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 so. They had no friends. They couldn't. Why? Because Shakespeare says virtue cannot thrive out of the teeth of emulation. Anything that is clean will be opposed by things that are dirty. It's standard procedure. Trust in God. Many times, we pray and say to God, save me, save me, help me, help me. And God will say, oh my God, didn't these people read about Moses? What are they troubling me for? You know what, what Moses said? But Moses, Moses got his human rod to be exchanged for the rod of God. 
So by the time Moses left the presence of God at Mount Horeb, he, the Bible says, and Moses departed with his wife and children and the rod of God in his hand. Okay. But in spite of the demonstration of the power in that rod that Moses saw on that mountain, and in, and in spite of the, of the power in that rod that Moses saw, when God used him to use that rod to show Pharaoh Pepe, and Pharaoh and his people were so, so beaten in the context that Pharaoh let them go after all the firstborn of Egypt died. Now, but when they now got to the Red Sea, Moses just forgot. When he saw Pharaoh coming on horses, and they were on foot, and he saw the Red Sea. He panicked. He prostrated. He told her, please, start praying. They were praying to God. God, they are coming. God said, Moses, what are you warning me for? What is that rod in your, in your hand for? You see? You don't need to pray. Use what you have. That is the same problem we have. Jesus has saved us. He has bequeathed on us that authority of the sonship. That's why Jesus always said, if you ask, if you say to this mountain, move, he never said if the high priest says. He never said if the bishop says. He says, if anyone will say, if you, who have been born and new, if you say to the mountain, move, be lifted up and be cast into the sea, he says, it must obey you. It will obey you. But we don't believe that most of the time. When trouble comes, instead of saying, we we'll start praying, oh Lord, oh Lord, come and do this. Oh Lord, you see them, oh, oh Lord, you see them, they are coming. Yay! What for? He said, you tell them. You face that mountain, tell him to move. And what you should do, you are now telling God to do. Don't you see? Some things don't add up. Commit your way to God, who, verse 13, takes the wise in their own craftiness. And the schemes of the willy are brought to a quick end. So all those who are planning to harm you, whether with diabolic charms, or those in your office planning to have you dismissed because they think they are your superiors, they are your boss, or because they think that they don't like your face, they don't even like your smell, and they are planning intrigue to demote you or to destroy you, they are messing up. They can't succeed because Jesus has what? He has saved you, even before you were born. Long before you even had the chance to be employed where you are employed. How? He would take those people who think they are wise in their own craftiness. The craftiness they are planning against you, it is through that that they will fall. The pit they dug, they will fall into it. Can any of you remind me in the Bible, somebody like that who dug a pit and fell into it? Amen. Yes. He dug a pit for Mordecai and Esther and all the Jews. He had erected gallows at the back of his house. Why? Because Mordecai would not bow for him. And Mordecai did not bow to him because Mordecai said, God says we should not bow to man. We should only bow to God. So Haman was angry. At the end of the day, who bowed for who? Haman bowed for Mordecai. Mordecai was riding on the, on the king's horse and Haman was the herald man. Hey, the noble is coming. What a shame. And then the very gallows that he erected was the one through which he was hanged. Fear God. 
He frustrates the devices of the crafty to save you and me. If he has not frustrated the devices of the crafty, I would either have been killed in, in, in Ibadan or Lagos or Ota. When I went to Ota and I challenged all the, these witches in uh, Ota. Or I would have been killed in Ghana, Acropo Ghana. Or I would have been killed in India. Or in Tanzania. Because me, I don't keep my mouth shut. And I'm not diplomatic at all. And people don't like the truth. But the Lord forestalls the craftiness. And those who think they are wise, the Lord brings all their schemes to a quick end. So he will do for you. As he defends me, he will defend you. Amen. They meet with darkness in the daytime and group at noonday as in the night. But, verse 15, this God that you should commit your cause to, he saves the fatherless from the mouth of these people. He saves the helpless. Not only fatherless. If you are going to read that fatherless very well, you remove that fatherless from the human scale to the godly scale. Even God saves those who do not, have not even known him. He does. He will save you. From the mouth of the lions. They come to devour. They come to kill. Not a child of God.